enough for uh, this introduction. We will uh, start this uh, session. So I think I have already shared my screen. Cyber strategy for reskilling a workforce in Asia. So uh, let's let's move on to the first slide of this uh, presentation. I'm sorry, Mr. Provenzano. Uh, the screen sharing is not working yet. Yes, it works perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. Dear attendees, uh, so before uh, starting this session about the cyber strategies for reskilling workforce in Asia, I will briefly introduce myself and um, RAFCLOS company. My name is Julian Provenzano. I am the CEO APAC uh, of RAFCLOS. We are a cybersecurity startup located in Korea and France. I have co-founded Ralph Keros with my associate, Mr. Marc de Supervielle, that was uh, on the previous panel uh, this morning in Korean time. Throughout my 16-year experience, I have worked as an IT and cybersecurity manager for Airbus company and other companies. I have a master's degree in computing science, and I have passed several information security certifications like Microsoft MCSE, or ISO 27001. I delivered and secured complex military systems all over the world with Airbus company. For example, installation and deployment design of security operating center for military headquarters. And I worked also with many other industries, including uh, banks or including um, uh, OT, etc. I am also managing a community of 14,000 professionals in cybersecurity with daily publications, technical most of the time, or based on compliance or cybersecurity topics on LinkedIn. Ralph Kuros, as we said, is a cybersecurity firm and we provide expertise for all, our IT all the IT security needs in Korea, Asia, and also in Europe. We offer three kinds of services, security audit, forensics, infrastructure inspection, routing. We offer some uh, training. We are a training center that is officially PCB uh, uh, training center. And we have our own bootcamp program that I briefly introduced this morning to help cybersecurity professionals to risk skills. So since many years, we used to discuss with people that want to change their career and we provide them IT security courses in order to make that uh, project possible. We also uh, work for security audit with uh, ISO 27001 or ISO ISACA uh, uh, best practices and uh, globally consulting. Usually, we, as we are a startup, we are an entry point for addressing security needs of companies from the fraud audit to continuous penetration tests bug bounty, remediation, IT security architecture depends on the country manager needs or the startups needs that we are working with. And we are also working with the different chamber of commerce, especially in Korea. So when, if you have any questions about the Korean market in cybersecurity, I would be happy to help you on that. So French Chamber of Commerce, European, European Chamber of Commerce, La French Tech, and also we are often invited as speakers or lecturers. And as I said, we are certified by ISACA and ISO organization. So which kind of customers are we helping? Industry, finance, luxury, corporate companies, SME, startups, academia also. We are also sometimes judges in cybersecurity competition. And we have many partners all around Asia, especially in Singapore, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and India. That's what I can say globally to present uh, uh, Ralph Keros. Let's move on to the next slide. As we said for this uh, topic of um, cyber strategies for rescuing workforce in Asia, uh, even if we know that just a subset of businesses that directly produces, operates, sells cybersecurity solution, services, every industry, uses technology 
or is involved in digitalization to deliver its products and uh, services securely and efficiently to consumers. If you don't have any um, uh, trust in your customer for in uh, e-commerce, for example, it's impossible to work nowadays. It's completely impossible. So that's why cybersecurity is uh, extremely important for all the industry and not only one specific industry of the cybersecurity providers. With the boom of the cloud computing and the impact of pandemic, the cybersecurity industry is facing an unprecedented challenge. Finding and training enough cybersecurity experts to face a continuous growing threat of cyber attacks globally in the context of talent uh, shortages, especially in APAC. So this lecture will try to offer some avenues for thought about it through three questions. What do the cybersecurity professionals do nowadays? What are their uh, missions? What are the different opportunities of, of work for them? How can early or mid-career individuals undergo skill conversion to move to information security? And what kind of training and extracurricular activities and exercises could enhance their learning and the skills development? I have this sentence that you can see, having strong security technology is not enough. Training employees in cybersecurity is critical, according to Mr. Theo Siong Seng, sorry for my friend in Singapore if I pronounce it badly. Uh, so the Singapore Business Federation chairman in 2015. Technology is not doing the full, the, the full job of protecting the company. The human risk is uh, one of the key factors, but also training of the pro professionals that have to protect the company assets. And the number of uh, people whose job is modified, replaced, uh, is increasing a lot, especially, for example, for automation. The increasing adoption of automation and new technologies has already started to change the face of the private sector network. More than 80 different occupations are likely to be affected by automation. While some jobs will go away, others will increasingly rely on technology to perform routine tasks. As occupations transform, employees will need the skills to adapt the new ways of work. Reskilling and upskilling, while still nascent in the private sector, are important strategies that companies can use to prepare employees for this transition. So let's have a little overview of what, what are the main uh, numbers, figures in the, in the employment market first. Uh, we can say, yes, we have a, a strong employment demand globally. Uh, I focused on one uh, of the workforce study called, uh, provided by a very famous institute, Cybersecurity Institute, ISC Square. So the ISC Square Cybersecurity Workforce Study 2021 uh, estimates that we have a global cybersecurity workforce of 4.19 million uh, people. And they focus not on all the world because they don't have enough, it's difficult to, to get all this kind of data, but they focus on the 14 country specific workforce estimates. And they started by a survey based uh, formulation before doing this exercise. And we can see on this figure that uh, the employment between 2020 and 2021 in the world increased by more than 20%. 3.54 million people employed in the 14 main countries of cybersecurity to the 4, 4 million point, uh, 4.2 million uh, employees. What about the gap? Uh, the gap between the skills that are required in cybersecurity and the skills that are offered. And we can see that there is an impact of pandemic, of course. So this um, pandemic, of course, uh, had an impact on some companies because they collapsed. They didn't need any more in cybersecurity because the business is not working well. So even if this strong impact on, on economy, worldwide economy uh, is still remaining, the number of uh, people that are of resources that are still 
needed is, is very important. So it varies completely by region, as you can see on this schema. Uh, we are seeing, for example, that the workforce gap increasing in North America, in Europe, and in Latin America. However, APAC countries, they show a continued decrease in the cybersecurity workforce gap. And uh, this decline is substantial enough to offset the demand in the rest of the world. That means that if your interest individually is to go to information security uh, business in Asia, it's important to choose the right subdomains. It's important to understand what are the different jobs in uh, information security and what kind of job uh, as offers also still some opportunities in a uh, uh, career uh, path. Let's focus a little more on, uh, on the demand in APAC. So on the right, you have the uh, four uh, figures for Japan, Singapore, South Korea, and Australia. It is still the number of uh, job positions opened and that are not filled in cybersecurity. And you can see that Singapore, with only 6 million, around 6 million inhabitants, has a very, very important needs in cybersecurity. And of course, uh, the budget they dedicate for such missions is quite big. On the left, you can see how much employees in cybersecurity are working in such countries. So you can see that total, the total number of uh, APAC employees uh, in cybersecurity private sector increased around more than 100,000 uh, people. So it's a very dynamic and active sector to hire more people. Let's uh, try to focus now on the industry. What, which industry has the most important cybersecurity workforce? You can see on this schema, still uh, coming from this uh, study, that 24% uh, of uh, the employees in cybersecurity are working directly for the IT services company. So on the bottom left, you can see some of the companies that are looking for such skills. Of course, it's a big companies. So GAFAM pull the market in this direction. But you can see also that the number two is the financial services. It's a rank two in terms of, of uh, being active to employ such uh, tenants. Why is, so for GAFAM, we can understand cloud uh, is becoming used everywhere by any company, remote work also. So uh, all the people now, they want to buy their food, or not all, but many in the, uh, uh, in the modern uh, economies, the, the, the consumers used to buy uh, some services using uh, the cloud uh, services. When you want, they want to use a Uber, they want to use a cacao in South Korea, uh, there is a, a good reason to have more developers. And if you have more developers and more software code, you need more people to protect the infrastructure of the GAFA. But there is also more people in the financial services. And there are different reasons that are also specific to Asia. One reason is the higher expectations for the financial regulators especially following the 2016 Bangladesh incident. It was uh, uh, a compromission, and more than a compromission, the Bank of Bangladesh has been compromised by some attackers. Some of them come, come from, officially come from NK. And it's a state government bank, own bank. It's not, it's a national bank. It's not just a private bank that is a small size. So, after this uh, very important incident happened, a year later, in 2017, 18 of the financial stability boards of the 25 member jurisdictions reported plans to release new rules addressing cybersecurity in the financial sector. This uh, rapid worldwide increase in cybersecurity regulatory activity is illustrated by a recent survey that uh, shown that 
the financial CISOs spend 40% of their time to reconcile the cybersecurity and the regulatory frameworks. You have also another aspect that I didn't mention is the fintech growth. Fintech companies, so startup that are operating to provide fintech services to uh, consumers, uh, banks, or usually more uh, B2C uh, customers. Consumers. Such companies are creating jobs uh, a lot, and it makes a big interest for modern economies, and all, not only emerging economies also is the same. And this sector needs also more uh, regulate, uh, a specific new framework for regulatory, uh, for example, in Korea, we have the sandbox that is a specific uh, mechanism to help the startup companies to provide the service in finance without having so much restriction comparing to banks, because it's not possible to ask them to have so, so, so complex infrastructure. But still, these are a few reasons that uh, the the, the needs in fintech and in finance sector in cybersecurity is increasing. All the factors include the general evolution of the cyber threat landscape and growing awareness among senior executives of cybersecurity is important, of course. Other sectors are like governments, central banks. They have difficulty competing with the financial industry for cybersecurity talent. And the reason is simple. The industry offers the highest salaries for cybersecurity professionals globally. And an, an, an intended consequence of updating financial regulations focused on cybersecurity is that it will drive well resourced financial institutions to siphon even more cybersecurity professionals from the already limited pool, exacerbating the workforce challenge for non financial critical infrastructure sectors. One topic that could interest you is about the different kinds of jobs. What kind of job are required by such industry? So I wanted to prepare a kind of panorama of the different jobs in cybersecurity, but it's difficult because you have around more than 50 really different kinds of jobs in cybersecurity. Some of them are very famous. Some of them are not for people that are not already involved in such an industry. So I try to pick up some of the ones I consider that the most important uh, uh, nowadays. First, we have to explain the two categories of jobs we can have. The red team and the blue team jobs. Red team are offensive security professionals who are experts in attacking systems and breaking into defenses. The team is not hackers. The team is ethical hackers. Hackers try to break without respect of any rules, uh, the, the doors, the barriers put by companies to um, generate some data leaks, to steal information, to steal money, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The red teams have a different role and they respect the law, of course. Blue teams are defensive security professionals responsible for maintaining internal network defenses against all cyber attacks and threats. Red teams simulate attacks against blue teams to test the effectiveness of the network's security. These red and blue team exercises provide a holistic security solution, ensuring strong defenses while keeping in view evolving threats. One of the job here on the right part is very specific, I would say to, uh, uh, most of them are specific to blue team in this list. One of the job I didn't mention specifically, but I will give some comments is the job of pen tester. If you are a pen tester or if you are a red team professional, 
your job is to help the company, as I said, to test these defenses. So uh, I will talk more uh, about uh, these two uh, specific uh, jobs, but now let's focus on the list of the five uh, already jobs. So you have here uh, some of uh, some jobs that comply with the local data privacy law and the global security policy. It's the jobs regarding to compliance. So in the list, you can see information security specialist. It's an example. Globally, what do they have to do, this, this kind of uh, people? They have a day-to-day -day operation of cybersecurity and privacy data protection, and they provide critical administration to meet the requirements of the local law and the company global policy. You want to uh, understand uh, how businesses operate, and so you can protect them and ensure the new regulations don't have an impact on the company innovation. So if you are interested by such, uh, such a job, there are some specific standards uh, that are very famous in terms of framework that the companies need to respect. For example, regulated standard is HIPAA. It's specifically for North America. It's a format, but still the North American companies, they have branches in India, for example. And uh, with these standards, it's, we have to respect the way we store, we transfer information when you, we are in the healthcare industry. We have the PCI DSS, that is for the credit card uh, transfer between countries. So knowing the standards of uh, PCI DSS is mandatory when you are an information security specialist and you are working for Visa, for example. You have the ISO 27001, the DISA STIG, that is much more for military, the SOC 2, etc. ISO 27001 is very famous for Europe. How to protect uh, and how to certify that the company has the capacity to protect from threats and uh, with a specific list of uh, norms to, uh, to verify. As I said, the objective is to see if the organization you are working with is compliant without negatively impacting on the productivity. So globally, working as a security consultant will help you to gain experience in working in IT, and you can understand the business, broaden your horizons, and uh, with the regulation that the big companies are subject to, you will learn how to manage these uh, for, for those companies. So it's not a position that is usually very, too much technical comparing to the others that we will see. The cybersecurity architect. Uh, his job is to develop and document uh, uh, the, the, all the, the needs regarding to the development teams. Initially, it was more about infrastructure team, but you have architect in infrastructure and architect in software also. Now, because of the cloud uh, software and all the application using the cloud possibilities like software as a services, the cybersecurity architect is a, a focus on how the different application of companies that are operating businesses through uh, software as a service can scale all over the world. How can they move towards for more automation and shorter turnaround times? If it takes too long to deploy an application and to deploy it securely, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the people that have to secure the process of deploying, scaling the application all over the world, depending on the consumer demands, for example, streaming, video streaming. So, this, uh, this job is uh, important if you are interested to work across multiple development teams to implement, train, deployment engineers on how to effectively architect both the cloud and the on-premise software solution. Usually, it requires like something like five years of security work experience in, in uh, engineering or software development discipline. It can be... Uh, Java, it can be uh, 
C++, uh, there are no, no specific restriction for, for that. Huh? And also, you have to focus on computer science, computer engineering, information sciences, information technology, engineering field with specialization in cyber security. Virtualization, configuration of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service environment, and the associated software development environments that, for example, are using Microsoft Azure or AWS. I have also added the network architect, uh, even because now most of the network operated by companies is in the cloud, so it's virtualized. So it's finally uh, still a specific specialty, but it has been taken into account by the cloud security providers, by the cloud providers. So when you are in network security, you have to create a local lab network consisting of various components. You can deploy services like LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, or you can work with Cisco technologies. You can work with firewalls. You can work with IDS, IDPS. Uh, to protect against the company. I'm not talking just about network itself. It's a network for increasing the security of the company. Then uh, you uh, will learn how to configure, to maintain, to avoid uh, different issues related to infrastructure and how to test them when you have the sys administrators that have no time, interest, or knowledge. After that, it's good to focus on PTES. It means the penetration testing execution standards. It's a technical guidelines to discover uh, ways in which penetration testers and hackers can attack specifically the network. And uh, after there are also another job that is more for reverse engineer uh, to uh, build proper defenses against future attacks. Vulnerability researcher. It's a narrow specialization that requires a focus in at least one field. You need to become proficient, for example, in programming language, in framework, I'm talking about software framework, not regulatory framework, operating system. Uh, for example, you can study uh, assembly, C programming language, you can learn how video transcoding work, identify what sports in a library, for example, the video library, etc. You have the web app security tester. Uh, this job is needs absolutely no you to know uh, some code. For the vulnerability researcher, I didn't say, but uh, you have the people that are focusing on identify the new vulnerabilities, the zero days that make them people very uh, uh, performant to uh, participate to bug bounty. Bug bounty is uh, those big programs. Uh, with re uh, some rewards to uh, help companies to increase the security of their IT system globally. So if you are able to find some vulnerabilities as a researcher, you can get paid for that. Uh, and that's uh, one way some people live uh, in, the, in the security field. Uh, another approach is more focused on the vulnerability uh, coming from, for example, from the dark web and uh, that are revealed on uh, when you have such contacts in this specific one, but we can take a talk about that later. The other job I was talking, so the web, uh, web app security tester, uh, it's not necessary to know how to code. And you have some people that are very true experts and the people that are just good to test automatically because they will write some, they will use some programming languages like Java. Uh, for example, you have Selenium tools for that. And uh, the objective here is to set the, to test the security of the application. So you have different software that you can configure that are helpful for to generate tests on the code, like uh, unit test, and you will have a specific configuration to implement verification. For example before the flow. If some developers didn't limit the way they protect their variable in the code, you can put some specific fuzzing pattern verification to see if such a vulnerability is op 
open or not. After it, there are specific domains like SAST, DAST, but I don't want to go too deep in that uh, this definition. What is important is have a look on the OWASP resources if you're interested. This organization is free, it's a worldwide community, and they provide lots of help for the web app security tester with uh, documentation, guidelines, etc. You have also the cryptographer, crypto analyst, but I will not uh, spend too much time on that. The DevSecOps uh, uh, application tester, it's also close uh, to the tester I just mentioned before. Uh, usually, it comes from the software engineers. They become security experts to protect application. For that, you need to be proficient in at least one technology at stacks, then apply all the relevant security knowledge to making products safer. The last job is the CISO. The uh, Chief Information Security Officer is a senior level executive with, uh, within an organization, is responsible for establishing and maintaining the enterprise vision strategy, program to ensure information assets and technology assets are adequately protected. Then uh, I would say this is the most important jobs you can find uh, uh, when you are talking about cybersecurity. And you have some people working for the cyber industry. They can create some software or like product owner. Uh, you can become a marketing manager, etc. Uh, about the mission uh, and tasks in cybersecurity, as you can uh, see in this schema, this is just a few of the tasks that are related to the previous uh, job, the information security professional. He has, so those, those tasks are common, not only for him, but for other, uh, other jobs. That's why I mentioned them in this list. They have to be conducted in cybersecurity when you have a company IT system and you have some security teams. Of course, there are some specific key rules, as I said, for the local data privacy law, the global security policy, because there is an impact. You can be, receive some fines from the regulator if your company, for example, do not delete uh, after a certain time uh, the, the data coming from the customers. That's an example. You have also uh, some specific rules like the data privacy officer for the GDPR framework that has to be chosen in the company. It can be someone that is not technical. And globally, the people in the company, even the CISO, is responsible that the company has to uh, receive some security internal audit uh, on a regular basis, uh, lead monthly cybersecurity awareness activities, uh, having certification if the company is big enough. Some small companies, they don't need any certification to. Uh, to, to be mature enough in cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity must be tailored to the needs of the company and the business of the company. So just one, just something to know. Huh? Uh, we cannot provide the top state of the art of the cybersecurity for all the companies. Let's move on to the next one. Risk killing strategies for companies first. Uh, why and what happens with the company's needs in terms of risking? And after we, I will take the point of view of the individual that would like to go for this risking strategy. Companies have several options when it comes to filling critical positions, but typically find talents by recruiting and hiring new employees with competition for the new talent steep in several occupations, meeting future hiring needs and closing the technology skills gap require a more forward-looking approach. Retraining initiatives can offer several benefits for the, here I'm talking about the private sector. Providing people with new skills, it's a valuable way to retain motivated employees that have a cultural, uh, corporate culture, and whose, um, they would be otherwise lost through attrition as the roles they can have before are displaced. It takes time to find good people, hiring good people in companies. So if the job they are doing doesn't fit to their own uh, interest, capacities, and you just let them go in your company, 
what is the benefit for the company? So reskilling, and especially I'm talking for HR, HR need people who understand the way the companies work. And so companies should do continuously upskill and reskill uh, for the people that are working here and there. Reskilling and upskilling could also give employees the opportunity to do more meaningful work beyond the routine task automation can handle if it's because of automation they, are, they may lose their job. Also, uh, it's important because the companies may find some difficulties to hire and retain top talent in certain fields. I have specific examples in mind. Some private companies, they compete for tech talents. And uh, in Korea, we have some uh, top startup unicorn, that is Kupang. They offer much more attractive pay and benefits than any other company. So all the new people coming on the market, or they want to go first to this company. And that if you keep your employees on the long term and provide them opportunities to reskill, you can keep good elements that know the company and that will not have this uh, risk of turnover for, for your own working force. And uh, you can also uh, consider uh, that retraining existing employees so should be a workforce strategy. And you need, of course, to prepare your company for that. It's not just, hey, I will randomly pick up one of my employees that seems to be very depressed, and I will give him uh, this new position. We have to think about the challenges, the different steps to be able to, the strategy, to be able to find such interesting, motivating internal profiles and to give them at one moment of their um, a new uh, career path, the opportunity for the opportunity for reskilling and or uh, upworking. Upskilling, sorry. It's also possible to uh, grow the workforce with uh, attracting promising students that have just finished their, uh, their scholarship and providing some sponsorship programs. It, I will explain for some countries uh, that uh, happens. And also uh, for the mid-career professionals, we can see that. Uh, our, uh, a word about uh, reskilling and upskill. Both of these strategies help companies to develop the skills needed to remain competitive in the industry. Reskilling is refer more to learning new skills so that you can do a different job. And in the business context, context reskilling can also mean teaching an employee a new skill set. Employers may show an interest in rescuing an employee when they no longer need this uh, employer skill set anymore. And as you know, if also it's someone that is in IT, every three years there are new technologies arriving. So uh, it's very difficult to keep the people uh, on, the, on the, the last trends in, uh, in IT. Uh, and the risk is uh, the position they occupy become obsolete. If we talk uh, about upskilling, employees only improve their current performance in the same role. There is no change in the position or career path. Upskilling may involve training programs, mentoring, micro learning, etc. Through the upskilling, the companies they don't have to spend money or time to hire new employees, as we said. They only need to improve the talents of the existing employees. So about the strategy uh, for HR, uh, it's not easy, of course, because it's, uh, we need to predict how the work in the company will transform in the next years to develop a vision of what jobs will look like, what skills will be required, and what future needs will be in the specific context of digitalization. How is your company's mission likely to change the future? How will new technologies change jobs? What skills and capabilities are likely to be needed? Assess uh, employees' skills, it's a second step. How can your company assess the skills of its current workforce? What methods will you use to keep inventories up to date? How do the current skills of the workforce compare to the projected needs of the future? 
Then after you need to find, to get the workforce motivated, recruit leaders, managers, frontline supervisors that are willing to commit to reskill and upskilling by making the business case and showcasing employee success, successes. Encouraging the, uh, the employee support with incentivized uh, proce uh, process also uh, is a way to, to, uh, to make them motivated. It's impossible to have a process without investing, of course, on human. Find the right candidates. So you have to ask yourself what strategies can your company uh, use to encourage employees to take advantages of reskilling and skilling opportunities. How can companies communicate the current benefits also to the rest of the company of acquiring such a new skills to find the new uh, and better candidates? Be prepared, you have to determine if your company has the resources and the infrastructure to start a new program. Target specific skills and positions for retraining. And also what infrastructure and resources would you need to do that? And to make those employees practice quickly. The question is make them practicing quickly and how? Uh, a few questions that we hear a lot in cybersecurity about the cyber, cyber career. Uh, what cybersecurity career options do we have? Uh, as I presented a few uh, of the different jobs, I will not spend too much time and we are lacking already uh, of time. Uh, but globally, uh, as we said, we have different positions, program managers, directors, executives, CISOs, Etc. You have also people in charge of integrity of networks, preventative techniques, blocking unauthorized access, etc. And this, all of them, can are uh, some uh, answers to this question. How to stay up to date in the field of cybersecurity? You need to learn, of course, a lot through internet, uh, internet connect, uh, internet resources, uh, but. Focusing also on certifications, uh, participating to presentations on different topics like the one you are doing now uh, today, uh, participating to a MOOC, massive online uh, open courses, is a, a way to uh, being, uh, stay up to date. Meeting professionals that have the same uh, career, also uh, participating to association of cybersecurity uh, uh, professionals. Is there any technology you should learn first? In cybersecurity, I would say Python is quite useful for the technical people. Scripting is important globally. Having some uh, certifications on the cloud security providers is, uh, is also very important, like AWS or Azure, uh, etc. Uh, so it gives you the fundamentals that to go then deeper and to, uh, we will have a specific uh, discussion about certification. Will cybersecurity uh, be a relevant career field uh, in for, for you in the future? It's a question regarding usually to the AI impact. When you have AI and machine learning, is there a risk that cybersecurity will replace all this workforce? And the answer is no, it will not be enough. It will just um, uh, mitigate the risk for companies, but still the number of the workforce is needed to analyze the result of uh, the, the different tries of attack on the infrastructure. And about the skills you would need, troubleshooting, uh, time management, teamwork, curiosity pro uh, and problem solving are some of the key aspects you need to, to care. I'm sorry, I have to go a bit fast, but we can talk to that also on a face-to-face -face discussion later if you want. When you want to transition from IT to a career in cybersecurity, what should you do? You have five steps mentioned here. The discovery, the initiation, the relevant job experience, the evolution, and some mistakes that I recommend to avoid. So four steps and an optional one, let's say, that I recommend. So the question you have to ask to yourself is, do you really want to go to cybersecurity? Uh, do you have a clear understanding of the rules? Are you someone that, uh, that would become yours? And what they require in terms of skills to be hireable, you need to understand, can I be hired? And it must be very precise as an answer. Is the answer is, I don't have this certification. I don't have this kind of experience. The answer of 
the employers will be, I don't need you. You must have practical experience a lot, and it can be done. And I will provide some free resources on the internet uh, after about that. Practicing with people that give you also some kind of shortcuts, like uh, professionals that are working in training uh, can be helpful. Uh, you need to understand also which industries you are, are the best fit for you. Uh, some industries have a slower cycle to deliver uh, IT, for example. So it means that cybersecurity can work a little less uh, faster than on the classic industries. What um, for the initiation, uh, you have to work and focus, for example, on training courses, as I said, like how to become a forensic expert. You have also to uh, focus on uh, the continuous learning process, but it never ends. You must, that's why I say it's a continuous process. It never ends, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you like that. Uh, it's not just like I get my exam, I have certification, and now I am done for the 10 next years. My certification, when I started as a young engineer, are deprecated, and I had to always get some new one. We were much more working on on-premises technologies 15 years ago. Now we are doing 90%, 80% of our business on the cloud technology. So if we don't have any uh, skills about how to manage on uh, Google uh, GCP, for example, it's difficult to work for customers with this uh, kind of um, infrastructure to protect them in the, in the blue team uh, aspect. Also, uh, some uh, resources like Cybrary, Udemy, Coursera can give you recognized uh, quality courses. And that's important not to spend time on resources that will not bring you to, to somewhere. Like if you check just a randomly cybersecurity video on YouTube, probably it will be deprecated. The information are not work, uh, cannot help you at all. It's, as I said, uh, some the software we are using cybersecurity every day is updated. So if you take a video that has one year ago because you think it's very good for you, it will not probably work. Relevant job experience. Uh, when you have some uh, specific uh, uh, practical knowledge from OWASP, for example, or ISACA, ISC Square, etc., you will have to get the certification to work on specific uh, practical cases. And that's what we, I recommend on any, uh, uh, any uh, uh, experience in cybersecurity is you must work even for the compliance in the real risk assessment uh, analysis. Uh, it can be a supporting technician in the help desk also with the security um, uh, uh, needs. Uh, that you have to take into account. Uh, you have, some, as I said, some also uh, job experience that could be interesting, like freelance. Some people I know, some juniors, they decided they were working in media, media, absolutely not in IT, and they decided to have a freelance mission in cybersecurity because on their hobby, they were working in cybersecurity. And thanks to those missions, they had enough experience to prove to an employer that they can really work on it for him and being hired, and then now they change their job completely. Bug bounty is also another way to, to go for that. Evolution, uh, but you need to understand what are the different processes you can uh, you can pass in uh, cybersecurity to start maybe as a junior and one day to become CISO if it's your interest. If it's not your interest, you can focus on project management. You can focus on um, uh, you can focus on uh, expertise of different fields of expertise. Uh, or you can work more on the architect part also and become a senior uh, architect. You have also all the jobs regarding to SOC, so for incident handling, because it's a center that are able to uh, monitor real time the companies they have to protect. So there are many jobs in this kind of, of field. And it offers evolution because of the number of, uh, that is huge, of cybersecurity professionals involved in the, in the SOC. What about the career change mistakes to avoid? Uh, but take your time to build your plan and decide which domain you want to go. Do not rush for that. You have to take into account that you will have a pay cut at the beginning when if you want to, to, to change. 
be prepared for that and do not put yourself in a financially difficult situation. You will be starting whatever you will do as a newbie. Do not forget your network and your connections. Uh, it's the best way for you to find your next career move. Do not resign without your plan and a clear strategy, as I said. If you decide by yourself to have a look on the different cybersecurity certification, you will see this schema. And maybe you will be a bit afraid. It's, an, it's provided by paulgeremy.com. And this person have put on one schema all the different certifications in no about. So maybe it's not the whole worldwide, but it's the most famous one, 400. So it's difficult to find by yourself which one would fit with your interest. But you can start with focusing, are you interested in network security, AIM, security architecture engineering, asset security, security and risk management, testing, security, security operations. And after that, we can find what are the top, most interesting certifications in uh, every uh, specific uh, categories. But it is very difficult to handle with cybersecurity certifications. It's a jungle. This is uh, arbitrary uh, uh, selection of the certification I would recommend, depending on your interest. If you are less a technical person and more about uh, uh, being very rigorous, uh, being very interested in the different jurisdiction for compliance and audit, CISA, ISO 27001, CIA uh, could be interesting for you to have a look on. For the top, uh, the top for ethical hackers, CEH also is uh, very interesting. The certified ethical hacker qualification that is one of the, according to some studies, the fourth most desired uh, uh, certification among the cybersecurity jobs. Uh, you have the OSCP, etc. Uh, CISP is the uh, most famous because it's for the senior, much more the senior um, cybersecurity managers that are kind of generic. Uh, they need to handle different kinds of situations. Uh, and uh, you need to have a huge background to be able to, to succeed this uh, certification. But it's very, very recognized uh, for all the English speaking companies, uh, of course. Uh, quickly, the reskilling programs by country, I choose to pick up three countries because those programs are also based on government sometimes. It's not only companies that decide by themselves, I want to reskill. Uh, or individuals that say, I will invest on my future, I will uh, try to find a reskilling program. You have, I wanted to I choose the US approach, the Indian approach, and the Singaporean approach. And after we can talk a bit about Korea. On the US approach, you have to invest a lot of money. So you have a few organizations like NICCS, the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers and Studies. It's a premier online resource for cybersecurity training that connects the government employees, students, educators, and industry with the security training providers. They target federal employees, cybersecurity managers, students, policy makers, et cetera, to make them more aware about cybersecurity with learning. Uh, the um, NIST is very famous in, in terms of organization, American organization, neutral organization providing norms in cybersecurity, uh, and not only cybersecurity, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's wider than that. And they provided a, uh, something called the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, NICE. It's a fundamental reference resource to support a workforce capable of meeting of organization cybersecurity needs. So it's a, you have a lexicon that categorizes and describes the cybersecurity work. And it can improve your communication to identify, recruit, and develop cybersecurity talents. Uh, on the state, so globally, it's very expensive to uh, those programs, except uh, when it's based only on uh, private companies. You have to pay. 49,000 USD in US for a three years program for the top. SANS is the top uh, private companies offering cybersecurity um, training worldwide with the top people, top notch uh, speakers also. Some of the states in US provide uh, funding to reduce the cost, like in Virginia. Uh, so it's unfortunately the SANS training. Uh, are out of reach for many, many people living in Asia. But still, it could be an objective for some of them. 
the Indian approach, uh, it's completely different because in India, I didn't find any program. Maybe some Indian uh, speakers who are here or professionals could give me uh, some feedback. But for me, there is not specific program. And India focus a lot on bug bounty. Why? Because if you train as a professional to learn how to identify vulnerabilities, you make money with the bug bounty, as I explained before. So uh, many, many young Indians are turning to black hat activities also, unfortunately, not only the, the, the white hack one. And uh, the average bounty they can win, thanks to that, it's around 100 US, uh, USD. Uh, sometimes it can go to 750. Some bugs you can make 30,000 USD, of course, but they are very, very complex. So the competition is huge to make this kind of money, bug bounty uh, programs. So it's uh, the training that doesn't cost a lot. Many companies provide the training with videos, master classes for 10, 50 USD dollars, for example. The Singaporean approach is more uh, the core, the price, the cost is. Uh, less expensive than US, much more expensive than in India. And uh, it's the, the objective of this program, government program, is to create more 100,000 jobs, training ships, and skill training opportunities for local people in Singapore. And they pay 95% of uh, the programs of training. It is made with partnership like IBM. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that cost like only five percent of the total cost, like one thousand USD, uh, to get the training for the people living in Singapore. For Korea, there are some few programs uh, available. So I take the example of KISIA, that is an association of cybersecurity professionals. It's totally free education, and the company are paid to hire interns uh, that are uh, uh, that will work for our companies. So we, and they are paid more than uh, around 1.8 thousand USD during three months uh, to make uh, to be hired for trainees and to get hands-on uh, experience. I wanted also to share with you the CISO pass. It's a starting point uh, uh, for a career. So we can start uh, if you decide to try to go to this position. You can start as a junior level expert with zero to two years of experience. Usually, you can be an intern, a technician, an analyst. Then after you will move after two to five years of experience to the mid-level engineer, senior technician, senior analyst. Uh, two, then after being in the age between five and 12 years of experience, when you become a senior engineer, security architect, because you have enough background to understand the different kind of architecture that exists, compliance officer also. And after that, some a few of those people decide to become executive level, and CISO is the top executive job you can find in uh, in a company. Sometimes it's a CIO that directly that is acting like a CISO. But you will say, what is exactly the CISO uh, responsibilities? What is he doing? So I gave you a few examples. He is managing the IT security budget and he communicates with the appropriate parties, as you can see is doing the reporting for the board, is divide, from, uh, identifying the strategies and implementing the IT solutions with his team to minimize the risk of cyber attacks. He's not the CIO, he's dedicated to security normally. He has to oversee the management of the IT security department to give the, to the, the leadership also to the team and to develop also the staff interest, motivation, uh, to, to, because uh, it's a very, very stressful job. Very successful. So the people in cybersecurity, they, 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 it's complicated to be in the blue team uh, role as you don't know when you will be hacked and it will probably happen. And you will have to manage a crisis regarding to this uh, compromission um, tentative or success, uh, successful. Uh, you have, yes, also, he has to ensure the compliance and the governance. Even if you have the compliance officer, the compliance officer will, will, will report to the CISO. Uh, the CISO also has to implement the business continuity plan to prove to the company that even if there is a big disaster that will occur on uh, his data center in the US, the company can still work and with a very minimal uh, interruption of uh, SLA. Uh, and also, you can see uh, he has to run the security audit, not by himself, but conduct the team that will run the security audit 
uh, and also the security awareness to help employees to uh, reduce the risk of uh, being uh, fished or being uh, attacked through social uh, uh, engineering attacks. What we decided to do since, uh, since a few years now in our flows is to focus on bootcamp. Why? Because we had some of our customers that were not cybersecurity companies, they were thinking we have been compromised. We pay a lot consultant and we don't know how we could protect by ourselves. So the people that had this kind of bootcamp, their objective was to become security professionals without any specific IT experience. For them, it was very specific company in Asia. It took six months, uh, five hours per day, for every day of the week, not the weekend, of course, to uh, have a large understanding of the different cybersecurity uh, prerequisites, technologies, processes, and to implement such a knowledge in the company during the different uh, months spent uh, in this uh, training and this fully remote training. So it was possible to manage with this customer, even if the infrastructure was not in Asia or partly in Asia, partly in other uh, continents, and uh, the workforce was also in another country in uh, Asia. So what to, uh, does it contain uh, to become a security consultant? Courses about all the basics in how to secure an IT infrastructure, how to secure IT code, how to use the different tools that exist in, in the blue team field, understand the different red team uh, tools also, based on real cases. It's not training by trainers, it's training by consultants in cybersecurity, operating missions in cybersecurity every day since more than 20 years, probably. And so on the right part, you can see some of the different uh, topics that were uh, included in such training. So individuals are interested usually with a shorter uh, duration, like two months and more uh, full-time uh, companies. And also academia has asked us to provide such a training. So you can see here an example of uh, this reskilling program based on a monthly uh, uh, summary, let's say. And you can see you have some specific workshops, not only theory, it's a mix of theory, practical courses, and specific workshops when we apply what we learn and what we were assessed. Every month we have to assess the, the, the understanding and the, uh, the, the, the good success of uh, the trainees to the different exercises. And the workshop is to, of, as, to uh, as an objective to give you exactly the same mission as an IT consultant that have to conduct this based on real case data, anonymous, of course. Pen test also is part of such a mission because many attacks come from the pen test. So we had to train our uh, students how to practice pen test using SQL injection, using the top 10 of WASP, etc. Initially on a sandbox on an environment, and then after on an environment that is a real environment, custom environment, of, of course, limiting the of scope with many protection to avoid an impact on the production. A few resources for you, if you have an interest in such a field to become a little more practical uh, uh, users and act, practical active uh, trainees, have a look. All of them are free resources. The top 10 vulnerabilities you can install by yourself. And you, if you know how to install the basic environment provided by uh, called the web code, you will be able to conduct such, uh, uh, such uh, uh, analysis. Uh, digital security, you have some free virtual machine you can install and then try to pen test them or attack them. You have a possibility on accessing on the full platform for free with some courses and step-by-step -step courses like the uh, key clock one. You have some CTF challenge if you want to uh, be more autonomous, etc. And uh, we have started this Purple Academy to provide uh, the, this bootcamp for the maximum of people. We also publish every day on LinkedIn for free resources that we consider very good for IT professionals. And we get hundreds of likes every time we put such resources. So try to follow them 
learn from them and give comments about them also. We have just maybe one minute for possible one question. So please don't hesitate if you have one question. It's a bit difficult to summarize all what we can say about the different cyber strategies for risking workforce on the employee and on the company point of view. But I hope that those inf this information uh, in one place will help you to go further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Provenzano, for your productive and insightful speech. We will take um, a short break. Please come back for the next lecture by 2.20. We will have a five minute break. Next lecture will be about real APT attack cases by North Korean hacking organizations by Mr. Tong Hyun Moon. So thank you, see you again.